Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel for another bake. Today's bake is going to be rhubarb and ginger crumble and this one's really really easy but super super tasty. So let me show you guys the ingredients list. 200 grams of soft unsalted butter, 300 grams of plain flour, 125 grams of golden caster sugar, around 70 grams of stem ginger and syrup, 30 grams of flaked almonds, and finally around 800 grams of trimmed force young rhubarb which has been peeled back as well. Okay rhubarb ginger crumble is a really good one then you just get that nice little hip ginger now and again and that super sharp rhubarb sometimes so the first thing we need to do is we need to whack the oven on to about 160 degrees. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the crumble mix and my crumble mix basically is just making shortbread and then adding a bit more flour to it so it's a little bit more looser so we've actually got a Kenwood Chef here what we're going to be using but we definitely use by hand so we're just going to mix these all together until we make shortbread. Okay, so you want to add all your soft butter, add all your golden caster sugar, and you want to add around three quarters of this flour, just so there's about 100 grams left. Okay, these have all been mixed together and it's like a formed dough. So now you want to add the rest of your flour, just until it starts to make a bit looser again. Okay, this is looking the perfect consistency now. Still make a dough if you pushed it together, but still crumbling enough for the top. So now we're going to put this to one side and we'll work on the rhubarb and ginger mix. Okay then for the rhubarb pot we've actually got a really deep tray here, 5 by 7 and it's going to keep all our rhubarb nice and cosy. Okay so a great trick with this rhubarb then, we're going to chop this nice and thick so it doesn't go all soggy in the uh, oven and it keeps its shape as well. So we're going to chop this qu quite significant portions really, about 2 inches, just so it keeps its shape a little bit and we do this to all of them. Notice how on the bigger pieces I'm dropping them a little bit smaller just to try and keep them all even sizes. Okay so that's the rhubarb done. So we've got our stem ginger here and you want to take at least five out. So you want to halve these and I like to have a nice taste of ginger now and again instead of just being a constant ginger flavour. So I just do quite big chunks and we'll spread them around everywhere. These will break down in the oven as well so they're better to be bigger chunks just so you get that nice ginger hit. So that's sorted now. Now you just want to nick a little bit of this ginger syrup and give it a little bit of a drizzle, around four teaspoons. Okay that's the rhubarb mix done now, so now we've actually got our shortbread here and you just want to drop this nice on top. Now there will seem to be some big clumps but just break them down with your hands and drop them all on top. Okay so you just want to make sure it's all nice in the corners, get rid of any big clumps, and then we're just going to sprinkle the flaked almonds on top. Okay, this is looking perfect now. Now you just want to pop into the oven for about half an hour, just until that shortbread is nice and golden brown. Okay, it's been in for about 40 minutes now, and I've just turned the temperature up to 200 degrees, just for another five minutes, just to get a bit more colour on the top. This is looking great, this is really, really tasty. I love how it's like blipping around on the outsides as well, and those flake time just give a really nice colour to the top. So I'm really, really happy with this one then guys. I love like the crunch crumble texture on the top and that rhubarb should kept solid on the bottom as well. I really like the idea as well as the shortbread top as well. Instead of just making a normal crumbly texture, you get that nice crunch shortbread taste. So imagine bringing that out to the table then with a massive chewy custard, It'd be really, really good. And that deep crumble as well and that nice little ginger hitting out again. So let me know in the comments then how you got on with the recipe, any variations you did. Maybe you took the ginger out and put some oranges and it'd be really nice, or even swap the rhubarb and did some plums and it'd be really cool as well. But that is it though, my rhubarb and ginger crumble is done. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next bake. So we're actually going to chop up our rhubarb then, quite thigh. Tight. Let's think guys how you got on with the recipe, any variations you did, you didn't put some rhubarb in. Rhubarb in? <laughs> for the rhubarb part, it's dead simple. We just got a five by seven inch like loose tin. Loose tin? I'll see you in the next bake.